<laughs> Go ahead. Okay, fine. <laughs> there you know you want to do it. Come on, <laughs> fine. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, welcome to Real Women Will Stay, episode 18. Woo -hoo. So happy to be here. Yes, yes, yes. So glad we're here. Yay! Okay, guys, <laughs> back in another solid episode. We got a very special, I say special all the time, but this is very special, guys. It's very important guests we have on today. Uh, we have two. Um, Mr. Austin Broussard and Miss Denise Williams. They are a power couple in the making. Can we say that? Power couple in the making? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, guys, own, it. <laughs> own it. Own it. Own it. Absolutely. So, we're going to introduce Austin and Denise, but first, we got to give you a quote of the day. Uh, and this actually comes from them. I'm going to see if they recognize it, but. Mm -hmm. um, I, a little birdie told me that one of y'all's favorite quotes is, if you don't find a way to make money in your sleep, you will work until you die. And that is by Absolutely. Mr. Warren Buffett. Man, Warren Buffett. Buffett. That's the man. <laughs> Every time I hear that quote, it just like pumps a little bit more like motivation into me. Like figure yeah. it out. Figure it out. Exactly. exactly. It, you. it yeah. helps you to put things in perspective, right? We don't want to continue to work forever. Right. Oh my gosh. Whether that's for somebody or for ourselves all the time. You don't want to be tied to a desk or a computer or a laptop or right. a cell phone. You want to have flexibility. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And you guys have figured that out. But before we jump into your story, let me let me tell the people a little bit about you, okay? Okay. So Austin Broussard and Denise Williams are two up and coming real estate rock stars who are changing the game. Although each of them are successful in their own right, Denise is one of the youngest real estate brokerage owners in America. Congratulations. Boss. Boss. And Austin, <laughs> is a, Austin is a thriving real estate investor and MBA candidate at Yale. Hello, Black Boy Joy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yes. together, I love it. Uh, together, they are building yes. an empire that will help uplift, empower, and educate the community. So, Thank you guys for joining us. We're super honored to have you. Um, I know we, you guys have some gems to give to us. I already know. Um, so let's let's jump in and get started. One of the, the first questions we like to ask is how did each of you get started in the real estate industry? Ladies first. Yeah, ladies first. Okay, awesome. Um, so I got started in real estate back in 2012. So I've been in the business now a little over eight years. Um, the reason I got started in the industry is because, you know, when we're raised, you know, by our parents back then, they were telling us that we needed to go to college, right, and get a degree, which I don't disagree with completely. Um, you know, it served its purpose. But what I learned in that process was that I got a degree, right? I made sure I checked all the boxes. You know, I pledged in a sorority. I did community service. I had a high GPA. But when I graduated, I was still struggling to find a job. And so I didn't understand why, you know, I got a degree in finance. It wasn't like general studies, you know, or something like that. I was a very specific degree, but for whatever reason, I could not find a great job. So I ended up um, landing a job in Title Max when I relocated to Atlanta from Valdosta State. Um, and I did not like it at all. It was a very, very bad experience. And I was online just searching and searching and trying to figure out what industry can I be a part of that isn't going to make me feel this way? What's an industry that's going to make me feel good about what I'm doing to people? You know, I want to help people. I want to look cute while I'm doing it, honey. You know, and I want to have exactly. unlimited income potential. <laughs> so for me, real estate was the perfect match. It was the perfect fit for me. Um, and so as I continued to do more research, I was like, oh, that's it and um, decided to jump in. And now eight plus years later, I'm still in the industry and it's grown tremendously since that time. That's awesome. I can relate to that. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say, I can relate to that. I graduated with a, um, with a finance degree as well and wanted to kind of use that same motivation, kind of find my space. So I, I just, I can appreciate starting out with, the, with that background. And I'm sorry, Austin, go ahead. No problem. Um, no problem at all. I didn't want to mess up your flow a bit. Um, <laughs> I had a finance degree as well, right? I'm from Atlanta. I went to school in Atlanta, went to Morehouse College, got a degree in finance and Spanish. I double majored. 
And then I worked in strategy and management consulting afterward, right? So uh, I worked at Bain and Company for a few years and kind of what, what, what I was doing was basically advising you know, multi-billion dollar companies on how to make and save money, to make it simple, right? How to solve their problems. What does Walmart do about Amazon type problems, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but to be honest, my trail into real estate or my, or my trajectory into real estate started pretty much six months after I started uh, at the company that I, that I was with, at Bain and Company, because I had a close family loss. And at that point, I was 22. I was four days on the week, uh, four days on the road, right, flying. I left literally 5 a.m. on Monday, got back to Atlanta at like, what, 10, 11 on Thursdays. And that was my week every week. After that loss, I decided, hey, this is not what I want out of my early career. And so I stayed for another year and a half. But then I looked for an industry that would work for me, where I could be local, where I could make considerable income, and where I could also kind of secure the peace that I needed, right, on a daily basis be, by being able to create the lifestyle that I wanted. And so to put it simply, the funny story about how I got into real estate is actually that I went to one of those seminars where they say, pay us $30,000 at the end of the three days. And they teach you like, you can do this, right? In six months, we'll have it all back. At that point, I was 23 and I was advising really big companies, right? As a consultant. And I said, that doesn't make sense because they said open two or three more credit cards, transfer the balances, pay us the whole thing. And then we promise you, you'll get it back in six months. I was like, that doesn't seem like it makes sense. But what I did do is say, hey, if you said this is an MBA in real estate, then I should be able to talk to your alumni or current students, and they should be able to tell me it's worth it, that they've made their money back tenfold or whatever, but I need to be able to talk to someone doing due diligence, of course. They said we can't do that, but they said you can look at this website of success stories. What ended up happening is I cold called every single one of the success stories because they had phone numbers by them, and most of the numbers were not in service, uh, and the one number that was in service told me don't do it because starting this program and doing it that way uh, would be like flying or having a G5 plane, but not having a pilot's license. So get licensed first, right? This was a real estate broker in Atlanta who had done over $100 million in deals, and I joined the team. But in order to get licensed, the funny part of the story is that uh, I actually had just had a surgery, so I had to take my licensing course. Literally, why everybody's dressed like this, right? For two weeks straight, I laid on my stomach on an air mattress in the middle of the room because I needed the information and I needed it now. And so I took the course, of course, I passed it, and then quickly after I was in, in real estate in the investment side, understanding crime contracts as an agent. And from there, I started flipping it and doing what I do now. But that's the story in that four years. Uh, and since, of course, that time, I've been able to do deals, structure deals that are raising private capital, not using my own money, all that kind of stuff. But that was my journey into the business. Just like everyone else, I got exposed on the radio or some kind of ad, but I didn't go the sub. I won't call it the sucker rapper. What I will say is I didn't make the mistake of investing a lot of money with people that didn't necessarily have credibility with me or credibility in this market to be able to satisfy what they said they could promise and make happen for me. Wow. That just, it gives me chills because when I listen to you guys, we have a theme of our guests on the show and they seem to have odds stacked against them or they seem to have you know, some sort of barriers against them, but some kind of way they always find this way to push through. And I always say this and I get chills, but I'm serious, I get chills kind of listening to the story because there were so many odds stacked against you and you, never, you guys never gave up, you know, and, and specifically in your story, Austin, with just, um, you know, and I know a little bit about your background as well, being a single mother, Denise, because we've researched you and things like that, but you've kind of just taken all of these 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 steps to just keep just to keep going right. just to keep going and not to stop so yeah. ah, you know what i mean i get i get chills from that oh. yeah and then you know just kind of collaborating the way that you two you know have come together you know kind of tell us about you know how you guys are kind of building wealth together and how does that work working together collaborative uh, collaboratively do you guys work together on deals we do. Yes, please. Yeah, please absolutely. elaborate on yeah. that. Explain the dynamics of that. Please, because my husband and I work together, not together, work together. <laughs> um, so I would love to see the dynamic of that because, um, yeah, Ebony's been in the middle of, of that dynamic before. <laughs> He's more of the, um, I'm the more people person. So he's more, he, he likes to actually do the work on uh, flip homes and stuff and properties. Uh-huh. And stuff. Not the one, he's not on the acquisition team. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> okay. He started there and we moved. <laughs> so yes, please tell us about how you guys work together. Gotcha. So Kim, your partnership depends on the day, huh? Like, <laughs> so he's a Gemini. He's a Gemini. So, uh, you know, right. 
Oh, oh, Gemini. Uh oh. Uh, you're in trouble. Yep. Um, no, so I actually, us working together, this is the first time that I've worked with a partner that it, this closely and right. this much proximity and having this much trust. I think that that's the foundation, right? You have to be able to trust the one that you're with. I think that a lot of partnerships when it comes to um, love and significant others, people, you know, you have horror stories because it's like, oh, don't get your honey with your money or whatever the case may be. But I think that oftentimes that happens because trust was never the foundation in the first place. Um, because whether it's money or whether it's, you know, trusting you to go out to the store and come back without giving your number out, all of that stuff is in the same playing field. Trust comes at the core of it all, mm -hmm. you know, and so I trust him completely. And because we're both in the same industry, you don't have to be in love and have blind love, right? You can do contracts to make sure that you're both protected. Mm -hmm. And I think that that... <laughs> I think that that, <laughs> that has been something that has helped us to have that level of comfort because to me it's like why would you go work for another brokerage pay them a fee give them part of your commission when that can help us to build our empire you yes. know what I mean we have contracts in place to protect you if we feel like you know it's just we're bumping heads or the collaboration just isn't working then yeah you make adjustments at that point but regardless of if he can't stand me today or tomorrow i'm getting a part of that commission check okay but um i think it just goes back to making sure that you trust one another and i love that we've been able to identify our role in the partnership so for example you know i'm the organized one i'm the punctual one I'm the one who keeps the momentum going. You know, I have the creative ideas. Mm -hmm. And Austin, not that you're not creative. This is great. This is great. <laughs> well, or, 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 I love how silent he is. I'm the punctual one. The punctual that's, one. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> right. I'm rah, rah, rah. He's like, crickets, crickets. Um, but yeah, but with him, you know, he's the more technical one. He can get all the technical, because oh, I can't even speak, technical things done. Mm -hmm. He's my Grammarly on demand. You know what I mean? His writing is impeccable. So he can help me to revise all of our stuff, all of our marketing, any kind of deals we have. He can structure them. He's my numbers guy. He's our partner. So everything he's phenomenal at, I'm weak in those areas and vice versa. And so I think that that's helped us tremendously in this partnership. Right. And so I'm not going to lie to you all and say, hey, it wasn't, or that it was just a, a super easy decision, right? As a man, right, in your own space, you definitely have a little bit of hesitation when it comes to having your, your license hung with a broker or doing business with a partner where there seems like there could be any leverage that they have over you, right? I'm primarily an investor anyway. So the agency side of her getting a piece of the commission and all that wasn't as, as worried as much. Um, of course, I represent people for traditional buyers, buyers or sellers and small apartment buildings, things like that as an agent. But my primary concern or thought, I would say, before entering kind of the partnership, because it took a while before. Yes, I broke. It he wasn't was just with like, another company for a while. Right. I was like, um. And I'm like, look, I got, I got to see what you got going on before <laughs> I you know, allow you to see what happens, right, in my lifestyle, or kind of put myself in any position in which I lack the leverage. I'll just put it that way, because this is business. Mm -hmm. And she and I have a favorite saying, or saying that we, that we mentioned a lot, which is, you don't think people will do you like that, but they'll they will. do you like that. Right, they will do you exactly like that, whatever that, that uh, is. Hello. Um, that's and so that's what the, that's what the <laughs> hesitation was, right? Yeah. So once I saw, okay, this is a decent person, right, an honest person, pure heart, and the rest, and I and believe I, in the vision, I mean, you know what I'm I said that too, but um, no. Nah, Let's once, not leave that out. Once I said I could believe in the vision, right, and also saw saw what she was trying to do with her company, it made sense to to come together and start to add to uh, what they could offer because it was only it was only right. It made sense uh, when it came to investment or questions and all that. She was already already in my inbox and all that. So it was like I might as well if I got to answer these questions, I might as well do it with a business partner where I can also get a piece of these deals, we can structure it and we can make it work out together. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that if you are thinking about doing business together, you gotta be careful um, because we've seen, not from each other, but we both have dealt with people in the mm -hmm. business space, right? Where it looks fantastic on paper, 
It yeah. looks fantastic on Instagram. Even, yeah, I was gonna say it looks Instagram. fantastic on their website. But when you get up close, it's not fantastic. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that's a concern that a lot of people have with their partners. But mm -hmm. you have to vet just like anything else. Do your due diligence. Make sure your contracts are in place. And then also be a good person, right, yeah. consistently. And that tends to vet or tends to, to, to deposit some goodwill in a situation where you're not as worried about them trying to get back, right, because y'all argue now she got to get an extra 10000 Like, it's not, it's not that <laughs> Right. Don't put it. Tell don't me put something. In right. Uh, and it, Since you tell me something really quick. I'm sorry. You know. So, would you guys are in the same office? Do you got? Is it a is a large brokerage where there's a bunch of agents underneath you guys? So there's 30. I think we're at 31 actually. Wow. So wow. Wow. we have a pretty. So thank you. We have. It's a boutique brokerage. It's not you know KW where they have 100, 200 agents in an office. But I'm good with that because to me, it's quality over quantity. I really want to have a brokerage where I can be myself. You know, I don't want someone that's just going to come and try to take over. I am a millennial. So, you know, right. we have fun. We're hip. We're techy, you know. And so there are a lot of agents just that just won't be a cultural fit. Um, with, and it has nothing to do with race. It's just about the environment of my office. Right. And so I like to keep it family oriented and just real... Um, Low key but powerful uh, is pretty much how we run the company. But yeah, a lot of people ask that question. Like, how many people know we, we're legit? We have, you know, what I'm saying we have. No, what I only ask that question: <laughs> How many people you guys have in there? Because you know, as a brokerage firm, if there's someone that calls the office and you have leads that come in from the office, right. well, someone could say, "Well, we know that leads going to Austin." You know what I mean? So it's so I'm wondering about that oh, dynamics yes. and the office oh, dynamics it. of it. You know what I mean? That's where my question was more oh, so geared towards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know you legit, talking. Mom. <laughs> and I think Yeah, no, no, I'm gonna say it like that. But I'm um you're not oh well, trust me, trust me. Um I know I wouldn't be here if y'all didn't think that. Um but with him, honestly, because we're so honest, like I've let people know from the interview stage. Like he's literally on a slide in my interview mm -hmm. process. <laughs> Look at like this. Probably. Okay. 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 I got one. Yeah. Uh, but it's all right. I'll be a hater, biggest motivator, your booty, everything, everything you need. Just know that. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> as far as that dynamic, let me explain quickly to you that my in a way that might make it make more sense. So instead of thinking, hey, that lead came to Williams & Co., that means it goes to Austin, right? Instead, what I did was I invested time into understanding how to even generate leads on a consistent basis, right. like how to market in the 21st century. And so because I set up a lot of the systems, right, it's, she can have all the leads. Matter of fact, as I go to business school, I'm setting up another system to even make it more consistent right. for right. the leads to go to the need while I'm away. Because when I create the website, when I create whatever the platform is that draws those leads online, I just duplicate it and create one for myself so she can have all that money. Because I'm not worried about penny pension, right? It's about being right. able to grow each other and have that mutual benefit. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not about, and I, let me get all the Williams and go a, agents and, uh, and leads. They can have literally yeah. all of them um, because I have my own thing going on. Right. Said I got because my own. Real estate is, yeah. a, is a business of abundance. It, you know, and if it's not yeah. a business of scarcity. And if you approach real estate, right with that scarcity mentality and um yeah. you know we, i always kind of talk about the, if you if you looking at and it's the pandemic right and you go to a costco and you it's the last toilet tissue roll on the aisle and you know you don't need toilet tissue mm -hmm. but you grab that toilet tissue anyway because you have that scarcity mindset you know what i mean and that's not real mm -hmm. estate and if you have that scarcity mindset you're not going to make it so i love what you said and i'm so yeah. glad that people can get to, get to hear that today Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and like I said, it goes back to transparency. So before they even decide to join the company, they know the relationship. I'm not unprofessional about it, but I do let them know this is my partner. We do deals and he's on the team. That way, if they have any questions at that time, they can ask me or, you know, they're just not blindsided. And we're very professional when we're in a professional environment. We're not all over each other. We're not, you know what I mean? You can tell he's very quiet anyway. So most of my team can barely knows he's around when he's there because he's just so reserved. The fun thing is she gets mad at me for how professional I am when we're <laughs> with the team. Because like she'll be in the presentation, I love you, and I'm literally 
Y'all know what I'm saying? Right. I love you too. All right, this isn't like a a reality TV show. I don't want them all in my business, and I've never been that way as a person. And so you just got to keep the line where it is. And of course, love each other well outside of the environment in which, of course, a bunch of people are going to be trying to peek into your business. Right. And be professional. This is a business. And they understand exactly where I stand, and that's all that's necessary. Oh, Mic drop. Boom. And they've seen, of course, me. Right. I'm like, uh, uh, uh right. Right. what right. do I say after that? Okay, so tell us, uh, talk to us about your American you. Dream Initiative um, and what made you guys start such a unique program? Oh, awesome. Thank you for asking that question. So American Dream House was started actually because we both have a big, big heart, right? And that's one of the things I think has drawn us to each other. And in this experience with COVID-19, it caught us all by surprise. And um, for me, going through the transactions with clients who were affected by it, I personally had a client that um, had someone pass away uh, due to COVID-19. And so they weren't, you know, my clients weren't able to finish their transaction because they had to cancel the contract. We were under contract. They had to cancel their contract because now they needed their closing money to pay for funeral arrangements. And so it was heartbreaking to see that um, because I'm like, oh, wow, you know, it's impacting them significantly. And I think Austin had a client who had symptoms of COVID-19. And then what was the other thing? There was something else that there happened. There were a couple of things, actually. One guy lost his funding because then they yeah, started getting scared. Yeah, I had another scared, client that lost funding. Um, because of COVID. Another got symptoms, uh, and we had to do the entire transaction virtually, right? I right. never even saw the property in person because of that, that the nature of not wanting to get sick. And then another, um, what was it? Oh, again, they had to spend money that was related to the real estate in order to protect and take care of family and themselves. Mm-hmm. And so it just changed things. It changed the dynamic financially and socially. And as a response, right, we had to step up to the plate and say, what are we going to do about it? Right. Because I don't want to be a company that's just focused on me, like support me, support my brand. I want to be a company that's looked at like, wow, Williams & Co. really helped me, whether it's financially, whether it's through education, whether it's through just positive words of affirmation. You know, we just want to, we're a community-based organization. So even at every closing, my agents have the opportunity to donate to nonprofit organizations here in Atlanta. Um, at every closing. So we give back thousands of dollars to nonprofit organizations every year anyway. Um, So doing this in response to COVID-19, I felt like it was a very direct and in the now time um, initiative that needed to happen because so many people were affected by it. And as we know, real estate is very cyclical. So it's down right now, you know, but it may, it's going to go back up. That's just the world of real estate. So if somebody wants to buy now, then we still encourage them to make that decision and know that you just ride the wave of real estate. You know, the same thing may happen 10 years from now. You can't time real estate perfectly. I tell people, you have to just go with the deal at the time that it's right for you. Make the best investment for you because there's always going to be a market that's up. There's always going to be a market that's down. So based on where you are in life, prepare for that moment and write your contracts the best way you can at that time. And so that was what, what, um, prompted us to respond to how COVID was impacting our local market. So what does the program actually entail? I have nothing to add. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. So basically what the program entails is that Williams and Co. agents will assist them through the home buying process. And by them working exclusively with the Williams and Co. agent, we're going to give a give back program to them towards their closing costs. So we're sharing in the cost of their closing so that they're able to have some financial assistance to get that house that they dreamed of. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's next level. Because the question is, as a company, what would you prefer? Would you prefer to say, as as a buyer or a seller, right, in in this situation, would you prefer to hear a company say, hey, we are with you, and that's it? That doesn't have any teeth, right? Yeah. right? It doesn't give you any tangible benefit. It sounds nice, but it doesn't show up on the bank statement. And so the effort to actually contribute and put your money where your mouth is always makes a difference, I think, because it gives an actionable and tangible commitment to the people that you're working with to let them know that you actually are on their side. Mm-hmm. 
and it's a scalable benefit, right? It's not just based on, you know, it, it levels up based on your purchase price. So the more you're spending, the more we're giving. So it's not just a flat fee based on, you know, every single house, because we know people have tiers. So we want to adjust to that, you know, because a certain amount is not going to assist you with a certain type of purchase price. So we've created a scalable program. That is so awesome. And that's something. Uh, and then kind the of no, sorry. I was just saying, like, to Thank Austin's you. point, like, it needs teeth. You know, there were a lot of empty, you know, yeah. we're together, you know, um, kind of messaging uh -huh. that you saw a lot. Yeah, but it's 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 empty when there's nothing to back it up behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of off topic, but I, I think in the news today, it's about Starbucks and about how they're telling people that uh, their employees can't wear Black Lives Matter you know, paraphernalia. And I know for a lot of people, like that is the sort of thing that is, is, is this, you know, it's a turn off because here you are saying we're one, we're mm -hmm. unified, but then your actions are showing something different. So kudos to you guys for, even though, you know, you're a boutique firm, boutique brokerage, you're already starting off with, with putting your money where your mouth is. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're gonna take it a step further and kind of keep it going here. And you know, we we always I always kind of talk about difficult transactions and kind of walking us through. But I think Ebony just brings up a great fresh a great question um, that we didn't propose and in the script. So we'll kind of go offline a little bit. And that's really just kind of about the climate of what's happening right now and being cognizant of the fact that we are in heightened racial tensions right now. You guys are in the mecca of of Black America in Atlanta right yeah. now and we're also in in the midst of of COVID, which is um what we're seeing reports of is resurfacing right now um we're talking about numbers going up again and so we're right here back back where we were you know it feels like march but just in a different a different way and so tell to us about mm -hmm. how you guys are motivating um your your agents how you guys are personally staying motivated and what it's like to be in mm -hmm. business right now uh, so I'll start. I like to give anecdotes because it helps tell the story, right? It helps. I, I teach children real estate and stuff. So I had to break it down to them. And I realized that explaining it to adults the same way helps. What I would say to that is that I think last month or the month before, there were 8,000 homes in Georgia that sold. So 8,000 agents got to the closing table, or at least 8,000 transactions happened in which more than, more than one person got paid, right? And so if you think just because there is a crisis going on that the world stops entirely, then you're putting yourself in a position to lose. What I do share with agents is that it's wise to position yourself, right, as someone who can operate in the 21st century and in the post-COVID environment. The homework assignment I have for anybody watching this is to go look up how many houses sold in the United States in 2008. In the worst financial crisis that we'd ever seen, people were still buying and selling. What the truth is, is that if you had the money set aside, if you see the Fed drop rates to zero, and if you're ready to make it happen, you're ready, you're ready to make it happen regardless, and you actually probably get a deal because of it. And so the idea that you quit just because it gets hard is wrong. The truth is that you have to transition your business model and say, how do I get clients from the comfort of my own home? How can I make sure that people still know I'm in the business? And how can I get the, to the closing table consistently? Because the bills don't stop, even though the world does. And so even when the house, as an example, mortgage bill stop, that forbearance in three months is not going to be a good situation on month four because all three months are going to be due as well as month four. And so for the people that quit and that were agents that said, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit at home and wait this out. I feel sorry for them because you're not going to be in a good situation. Mm -hmm. And so as far as keeping agents motivated, I tell them that. I can show you how to get clients consistently from the comfort of your home without having, without having to leave so that you don't have to worry about what your pipeline looks like. And I need you to be not just optimistic, but I need you to be factual in your approach to this, this whole situation and look up the fact that there are properties that are being bought and sold. And you could be one of the people that are at the closing table if you put yourself in a position to be so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I talked to my team about running the, oh, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I was just going to say, Austin, you dropped another boss move casually that you teach kids real estate. I just want <laughs> to, I caught that. That was, that's dope. That's really dope because I feel like, especially in our community, and that's part of the reason why we do this podcast is that to teach our community and our people about real estate and stuff. And I, and that's the same thing. You know, a lot of times when people open businesses, my uncle says this all the time, especially he's a, he's a pre-med and pre-law professor. And he's like, you know, people, doctors will get their, their practices up and running, but don't, don't have the financial side done because they weren't taught that part, right? They went to med school. They didn't go to business school. And he's saying that just like athletes, he thinks that it should be a requirement for people to to have finance classes so that they know how to run their practice. Same thing with this. You over here teaching our young kids or teaching young kids how to do or learn about real estate that they didn't even, you know, would never be taught in otherwise. That's dope. Right. 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 Denise, can you can you kind of? I was just gonna say if you could, if you could kind of touch on that and expand on what Austin said, Denise, and maybe kind of give us you know one example of of you guys' pivot strategy because we do have a lot of new agents that listen to the podcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. So what we've been doing, well, luckily we're we like you mentioned we're trying to run our firm in the current state period um with regard to technology and when i train my agents i talk to them about being business owners and when you're a business owner you have to learn to pivot you have to learn to be flexible in your approach with any business that you join or become a part of so one of the things that i actually train agents on is i have a concept it's called the right concept it's an acronym for r i it's r i t e R is for realtors. So yes, we got our real estate license because we want to help people buy and sell real estate, right? We want to be fly. We want to show luxury property, all the cute stuff, right? But what I learned was there's a discrepancy in the market. They're getting real estate checks. You're making 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 plus dollars in a commission check, but nobody is actually showing you how to transition that money from a commission check into investing. Because what I tell them is that no matter how much you love real estate, you have to have a retirement plan because nobody is coming to save us in real estate. You have to create your own retirement plan. You have to have your own health insurance, your own life insurance, your own wheels. All those are things that you have to set up independently. So regardless of if you you get into real estate knowing it's a dangerous industry. So you have to already have the mindset that something can pop off at any moment in this industry. So you shouldn't even get into real estate without thinking that first. There isn't security necessarily when you're becoming an entrepreneur. That's the trade-off. You get the unlimited income potential for higher risk. So you have to have that mindset. And so when I realized that agents that quit during times when they're hard, you don't have the mindset of an entrepreneur, period, because it doesn't matter what product you're selling, whether it's cars, whether it's houses, whether it's clothes, Either you have it or you don't, because every market is going to face some troughs. And so I try, you have to pivot, you have to keep pushing. And you like what we've done now is just do, you know, consultations virtually. We don't want agents to be at risk of catching the virus. Obviously, you have to be very cautious and protected. Investing more in technology with regards to listings. So doing more 3D tours and using Matterports and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's always workarounds to still getting your business done. You know, corporations are doing businesses and they're still making money during this time. So you have to put your corporation hat on and say, hey, how can I make sure that I'm still doing my job, but now just in a different way. But quitting is just not an option at all. That's such a mic drop right there. Like you hit the nail on the head, Denise. Um, <laughs> that was now your spot on. It's all it's about that mindset. Um so I know mm-hmm. you kind of you talked to us yeah. a little bit about what you tell your agents. What would you give um and this is for both of you, what advice do you give someone um who is considering a career in real estate? Like they're ready to accept the risk. Um, what do you say is a first a first? I think it's breaking up just a little bit, but I think the question was, mm-hmm. if someone's just getting started in real estate, what would I suggest to them as far as how do they, how do they get started? Right? Absolutely. If they're investing, uh, yeah, if they're investing, correct. I tell them to start with a 
right? I want them to understand contracts so that they're not one of these people out here with a contract that they don't understand, sliding it to someone to sign and not being able to explain it, and then not understanding where the protections are and where the loopholes are and where the risks are. So what I'll tell them, probably get licensed first. Then I would tell them, take a course or get a mentor because you are going to pay for your education in one of two ways. You're gonna pay for it in dollars or you're gonna pay for it in mistakes. And so either you, right, take the time, or you can pay for it with the time, of course. So you pay for it in dollars or mistakes or experience, however you wanna say it. But I would say, hey, find someone who's done exactly what you think you wanna do. And then go try to find out as fast as you can whether it's something that you want or whether it's something that you don't. Because what the trick is when it comes to being an entrepreneur and getting to success is iteration. It's not about being right the first time, but it's about finding out how finding out how wrong you are as quick as possible, right? Because that allows you to then choose what section of the market, what section of the industry, and how you need to communicate with your, your, the people that you're engaging. Uh, it allows you to choose that quickly as opposed to spending years going a long way but going in the wrong direction. And so what I say is start by asking questions and finding out what you don't want to do and then when you find the one or two things that you do want to do, get really good at them. Become an expert, and then you won't have to worry about where the dollars are going to come from. I like that. And then I, I appreciate that so much coming from an agent perspective, you know, that type of advice. And I think this will be a great pivot to you, Denise, to say, you know what, once you, you kind of develop that mentor, and once you've made that decision, then how do you take it that next step further and choose a brokerage firm? Because you have, a, you have actually classes where you kind of guide people on that. You actually have a course um, on guiding people towards the right brokerage firm to choose. Can you give us one of your um, a highlight example, you know, uh, one, of, one, one tip that you could give us? Absolutely. So what I did, right, so one of the things that I get asked all the time is, you know, how do I get started in real estate? You know, what do I do? How do I start? The first thing I would tell people, I'm big on mindset, is just make sure it's an industry that you want to be in for the right reasons. Um, I think that a lot of people uh, fantasize about real estate because they fall in love with the pretty houses. You know, they fall in love with the marketing that agents are able to do and how good, you know, agents look and how much fun it looks like they're having. But one fact that you need to keep in mind, about 87% of real estate agents fail in their first couple of years in the business. So knowing that statistic means that you have to go into this with the mindset, not that I'm just gonna sell a house or two a year and you know, I'm gonna keep my full-time job. Yeah, you may have to start with your full-time job in order to pay for your marketing, to pay your brokerage fees to do that, but that shouldn't be your focus point. That shouldn't be your mindset going into it. You need to look at it as a business. So just like you would evaluate a McDonald's before buying the franchise, you need to evaluate the real estate industry as a whole and say, is this an industry that I can see myself in for the next three to five years before I pivot to something else? Because I've been in the business eight plus years and now I'm finally starting to hit my stride. I'm finally starting to you know, be on podcast or be invited. And I've been doing this a very long time. And so you have to make sure that you're putting in the work um, and you don't wanna do that halfway. And I'm not saying this for new agents listening in because I always get this question, well, when should I quit my full-time job? You need to quit your full-time job when your real estate income can replace that money or at least put yourself in a position where you have enough saved to take that leap. You know, you want to be wise about it, but you don't want to go into it holding on to that thought. Your thought has to be, I know I'm going to leave my full-time job and set a date to do so. And then put a plan in place to say, I'm going to, you know, get this number of clients, this number of closings, and then I'm going to quit. But I think so many people just jump into the business with no plan of action, no course of marketing. You know, you don't have to have a real estate license to find out how to market as an agent. That's what attracted you to wanting to get in the industry anyway. So look on YouTube, do the things, do the research. You know what I mean? And then the best thing, the most important thing you can do is take my course, okay? So I was about to say, we have we uh, plug this course. <laughs> okay. plug this course. <laughs> Let me go ahead and do a shameless plug real quick. Um, once you, you know, this course, <laughs> this course is for individuals who are recently licensed or thinking about getting into the industry. Because what I realized was that there are so many people 
that one don't know how to start, but once they do figure out, okay, I'm gonna go to this online class or I'm gonna go into school, you know, I'm gonna pick this school and get my license. From license to their first check, there's a discrepancy, there's a disparity there. So there is a lot of room for someone to figure out, like from, it's similar to college. We went to get a degree, right? But when we went to our first day on our job, none of this stuff in college made sense. It didn't apply necessarily on your first day because what they're teaching you in real estate school is how to not lose your license. You know, what are the laws? What are the restrictions? What shouldn't you do? You're gonna hear a lot of no, 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 no. But they're not gonna teach you how to market. They're not gonna teach you the differences between brokerages. As a matter of fact, they can't really even talk about brokerages in real estate school. You know, they're not gonna tell you if you should join a small firm versus a large firm or, you know, what kind of training you should do or even how your first commission check should look. I can't tell you how many agents I've talked to who have complained about, you know, I joined this brokerage and when I got my first check, it wasn't what I expected. It's because you're, you can be blindsided by the mm -hmm. fancy mm -hmm. and, you know, you're just so excited because you got your license, but you don't have the knowledge of like, okay, well, what do I actually need and use? And is it worth me giving up this much of my money? So my course breaks down everything that you need to know from being newly licensed or interested in the business to getting to your first real estate check. I even talk about how to set up an incorporation so that you're running your business from the start like a business. There are so many agents in the industry that don't even have an LLC or don't even know how to start on getting one. And you're missing out on so many tax incentives because you don't have a business, because you're still getting commission checks you know, in Denise Williams' name. And so those are just some of the things that I go over and share with new agents because you waste a lot of time. And there are so many agents that could have been successful in their first year had they had the right mentorship and guidance. And so this course is really special to me. Y'all should definitely check it out. Go to firstrealestatecheck.com and sign up today. Right. So definitely <laughs> check it out for sure. And I think that's so important because we talk about that on the episode. We talk about yeah. that on the show, how so many people, even entrepreneurs, this, this advice can work for an entrepreneur. And we talked about that yeah. a little bit on the last episode um, about having an L or not having an LLC. And the first step is getting your business in order, right? Having, getting, getting your yeah. business together before you start a business. Right. Get yourself together first. So yeah, yeah that's another estate, reoccurring yeah. theme. Being a real estate agent is a business. And I think that's the part that people drop. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I feel like, you know, we're millennials and we grew up in generation X. We grew up in a different time where social media wasn't our life, right? But social media right now runs everything. And people, like you said, looking at glitz and glam and they don't realize, like you said, you've been in eight years and now you're getting interviews and now you're getting calls and stuff and how long it took you to build your business. They think it happens overnight. And even though you keep telling people that, they really think it happens overnight. And Beyonce was they not do. looking today. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's my mentor too. <laughs> so, so my is my um, yes. one of the advantages you have before you quit your job you actually have an advantage you have an advantage that most people that are in real estate full time do not when you still have your job you know where your next check is coming from mm -hmm. right meaning you get to invest in first real estate check right you get to take a course to figure out whether real estate is even right for you right or you get to invest in a course like mine which i'll talk about at the end uh, in which it teaches you how to actually get your first deal done, right? How to make your first five to ten thousand dollars in real estate without having to use a bunch of your money to make it happen. Um, but use that advantage, leverage your actual check, leverage your nine to five in order to create right the situation that you want and in, in as an entrepreneur. Because a lot of people jump into entrepreneurship thinking that entrepreneur equals money, and it does not. It doesn't. Right? Um, entrepreneurship equals growth if you know how to grow. Mm -hmm. But if someone owns right? A tractor trailer or a big John Deere tractor, right? They can say, I have a tractor, but I don't know how to work it. People do the same thing with LLCs. I have an LLC, but I don't know how to work it. So let us teach you how to work it, right? Let us teach you how to make that LLC make some money for you. Because they can say, I do business with my partner. Really, my business does business with Denise. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So set yourself up for success by engaging people that actually have your best interest at heart and will show you how to make the things happen that you want. Amen.
<laughs> I was like, he said, my business does business with them. Okay. All right. Hey. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. Um, these gems you're dropping. Uh, Austin, you, yeah. <laughs> Austin, you said something. Of <laughs> uh, course. What's the name of your course again? It's simple. It's firstdealdone.com. Uh, and the easiest way to find it, really, is just to go to austinbroussard.com. All my courses, all my products and things are going to be there. Just go to austinbroussard.com. It'll say courses. You'll find exactly what you need, right? But the whole point of the course is this. The first person that I talked to, talk, talked to about real estate when I went to that whole big conference told me to pay them $30,000 plus, and then they would teach me the business. Mm -hmm. I'm not charging you $30,000. As a matter of fact, I'm charging you less than a college class cost, right? One college class. The class you had to take after you actually walked because you didn't actually graduate. That class, <laughs> my course costs less than that, and it would actually teach you how to make money, right? Um, and so I want people to just get the mindset in order because when they see that, even if my class was $10,000, right? We do personal coaching, and that, that comes with a cost. It comes with the cost of the years that we spent to learn what we learned. But even if I tell you, hey, it, it's going to cost you about $10,000, $15,000 to, to start the conversation for me to really show you the business if you want one-on-one -on -one engagement, that's not a lot because your ten to $15,000 is going to teach you how to make millions of dollars over your lifetime. Right. That's a good trade, right? But unless you understand the principle of cost and benefit, then a course like First Real Estate Check, a course like First Deal Done, one that's lit my course First Deal Done will literally show you. I literally show you the contract. I show you the wire, right, as proof. I show you where it hits my account so you know I'm not lying, right? You got to know those things. You got to know that the person that's teaching you is real. Right. But then I show you the process because the truth is the real estate game is like the wild, wild west to a lot of people. A lot of people didn't like corporate America, so they got into real estate because it has less rules. Right. And so the people that you see teaching people often don't have any structure and don't operate well within a corporate environment. I put it that way. And so you can end up confused very quickly because that person doesn't know how to chronologically lay out any methodical process. So instead, mm -hmm. they tell you bits and pieces and they tell you the flashy stuff and hope that you buy. Mm -hmm. As an alternative, I offer a step-by-step -step approach where I explain it like I would explain to children or like I would explain to someone who is their first date in the business mm -hmm. so that afterward, they know each step of the process and can reference it. That's the difference in what Denise and I teach and how we teach because it's necessary to actually know what you're doing when you finish. Otherwise, right. you wasted your money. And I, I think too you mentioned something really good mm -hmm. is that with investing it can definitely be the wild wild west and because we're also licensed professionals mm -hmm. we have something to lose you know you can work with someone or invest in someone who has no license and you can't call anyone on them if they took 30 right. 40 50 thousand dollars from you you have to now be pulled into court for years to try to recoup mm -hmm. money and you will never get what you invested back because it's just so <laughs> we've seen it trust seen me. it um yeah. so that's another thing like you can see us we're real you know you can pull up to my office you know we're real people uh that have something to lose so we're not going to put our name on something that could jeopardize our lifestyle uh our safety you know versus other people you may see them on social media but you can't really contact them you might go to their website there is no phone numbers you know there are no direct email addresses and all you have is social media to fuss and make comments right. and dm and you know and they'll just turn their comments off or block you you know so having someone that you can learn from that has something to lose that can be held accountable right. uh is is a huge difference and that goes into your research and vetting process with regard to investing in anything right. whether it costs you a dollar or a ten fifteen thousand dollars i think that every dollar counts and you should do your research Denise said, pull I, up. I wanted to step in real quick and say, <laughs> you know, we don't have anybody in this space uh, that looks like you guys. You know, we have the Brian Buffinis, we have the Mike Ferry teams, you know, we have bigger pockets and things mm -hmm. like that. You know, you guys are teaching us courses and educating us. And I, and I can just see this as you guys are talking, manifesting this into you guys, if you guys could be this, this, this wave of, of new face of what real estate is and what real estate teaching and coaching could be. Because we just don't have that, you know, right. in that space. You guys know that. You know what I mean? We we don't have that on a mass level. We only have those 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 really those few big names. And so um and so mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for that. And you're right, our fiduciary duty is to the client. 
So we we can't be Wild yeah. Wild West. You know what I mean? There's there's a difference yeah. when you have that when you have that license. So I appreciate you saying that too. Mm-hmm. And then I just want to jump into the uh, books. So so we always like to ask our guests what sort of books kind of impact them and motivate them on a positive level. Can you guys share with us uh, two of your uh, favorite books or one each, brother? Ladies first. <laughs> you can't think of one. No, just kidding. Um, so my favorite book, y'all not listen. One thing about real estate and being an entrepreneur, you never miss out on, a t- on an opportunity to market, right? Okay. So my favorite book right now is actually my own. <laughs> I actually just pre-released my book. <laughs> it is called From Broke to Broker. And I'm extremely proud of this book. Thank you so much. I'm extremely proud of this book because I'm really pouring my heart into it. I think that as we talked about a little bit earlier, it's like people think that the journey happened overnight. But in this book, I'm able to really show you where I've come from, like how I got to a Buckhead office, you know, from, you know, sharing a room with six siblings. So, you know, it's very important that people know your journey. I think it also ties you to, okay, I want to support this person. It, It puts some realness behind what they're saying and who they are. And we're in a, I'm a very high touch person. So I really like to feel the person that I'm engaging with. You know, I've made so many social media friends and I know that they're gonna just absolutely love this book because it's like now you get to see another side to Denise. It's not just Denise the broker, it's Denise the human, Denise the person that made mistakes, the De- Denise that you know had to overcome some really life altering situations to get here. And so the goal of my book is really to just help people with their mindset and to know and understand that um, life will be hard everybody has a story right everybody has something that they can share everyone is special but you have to keep going because the difference between me and other people who may not or you know may be successful or people deem successful is just that we didn't quit in those times and i hope that this book will help to encourage other men and women it's not just about black women it's not just about black men it's about women and men in general that need to know that you can overcome obstacles and continue to push for and be great right. um and so that's this is my favorite book right now austin i'm going to gather that so, your favorite yeah. book is her book <laughs> the thing about it is i like my own stuff oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You got it. See what I got to deal with? <laughs> um, no, but seriously, to I offer some variety to the, <laughs> a mess. I want to offer some variety to the listeners. Right? Um, there's a book called Building Atlanta by Herman Russell. That's one book that I think if you're in real estate, uh, you should read because mm-hmm. it will give you some perspective about how it actually can be done. This is a guy who in the 50s and 60s uh, as an African-American man in the South had a 10,000 square foot house with a swimming pool inside of it, right? And so when I talk about, have, there's, a, there's a quote by, I went to Morehouse College, so let me, let me go ahead and do it. There's a quote by uh, Dr. Benjamin Eliza Mason says, not failure, but low aim is sin. And so when we talk about being engaged in real estate, the truth is the building that we have our office in was developed by someone, sold by a broker, right? And leased by a broker as well. But Oftentimes, we are not engaged in that part of the wealth equation. Right. And so the best thing to do if you want to get there is learn how other people who have been there did it. Right. The blueprint is there. It's just it's not the book that everybody wants to read, usually, because they're so worried about reality TV. Outside of that, though, is another book. Right. And I got to say, it is coming. It has been in the works for a while. But life has life has happened to everyone. Right. Life gets busy. But I'm releasing something uh, here pretty soon. And I think it's going to be an interesting opportunity to share from my perspective just a lot of the things that I've been wanting to say. I'll put it that way. Uh, The reason why I think it's important to write, right, is because the intellectual property that you will have lasts forever. And so that one book will pay you for generations if it's good enough and if you market, right? So one thing I want to say is that I'm proud of Denise for even writing something putting it on paper and not just saying, hey, I'll tell my story in the podcast. Because although podcasts exist, if you have a tangible product or a digital product, it's something that you can own and then you can leverage for the rest of your life. 
So Building Atlanta and the book that Austin Broussard releases. Uh, but I just, I think it's really important to, to note that she said, don't miss an opportunity to market. Um, it is true that in the 21st century, if you do not market, you will go out of business. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't like being on video, you don't like being on camera, you don't like talking to people, mm -hmm. then you better figure it out. Or if you don't like being talked about. Oh, Ooh, I heard <laughs> that like that. Ooh, right, right. That late, that last late. Time. right. Right, you know, some of those <laughs> things that, um, that will happen or you <laughs> <laughs> that's a real thing you know it's like oh my gosh what do I put on that was a whole conversation I had with myself because I'm like uh let me make sure I didn't post this dress let me you know so there's a lot of things that people have to overcome <laughs> for sure right Mm -hmm. that's an important important note especially like given social media some people have really learned how to capitalize um uh being talked about and you want to be able to control yeah. the, your narrative but i mean you get to a certain point where you know you can't control i think her name is b simone yeah. now she's going she's uh, viral because she said she only wants to date another entrepreneur which i mean really who cares but people are talking about her now so people are going right. to see how she did to make her money that's off subject. I'm sorry about that. But I was just, I was just, you know, concurring with what you said. That's just how things happen. And we have those kind of conversations. And I know we, we have to wrap or soon, but I wanted to just make a point going back to the relationship aspect of working together. You know, as you elevate, as you're on a higher platform or a larger platform, there are going to people going to be people that you meet that are for you and people who are against you. And there are going to be people that are a little bit for me more for me than they should be and a little bit more for him than they should be. And so I think going back to the question about doing business with your partner, you have to have open dialogue about people that might be interested in you beyond business. And um, you have to be able to communicate, you know, because people are going to slide in the DMs inappropriately. People are going to contact, you know, you do a speaking engagement, people are going to run up to you and want to talk, you know what I mean, other than business. And so, Keeping that in mind, people that are thinking about doing business with their partner, no one understand that you have to be ready and prepared for that level of attention mm -hmm. and know that you need to really make sure you have a solid foundation with one another, going back to that trust factor and also that open communication like, hey, so-and-so, you know, I might need, and it's a blessing we're in the same industry because I can easily be like, you know, I need you to show him these properties or you might need to work with her because you know i just don't feel comfortable or whatever the case may be and we don't make a big deal about it because we feel like that's life is going to happen whether i have a ring on my finger or whether he has a ring or not that's going to happen you're attractive individuals you're smart you're intelligent you know you have success um that's just a part of the game mm -hmm. and so don't allow that couples to get in the way of what the ultimate goal is and what the focus is and don't start to hold one another back because you're fearful of someone else catching their eye or getting that attention so i think as long as you're solid and have open communication you'll be good absolutely that's so i love it and so you know that that that's a great kind of segment into our our first ever segment here that we're doing we're going to do this with you guys Surprise. And, and surprise and prize you guys and, and how we kind of um, uh -oh. gonna start wrapping Getting things hit. up a little bit right and since you guys are talking about togetherness and, and unity we want to see mm -hmm. you know um just just how like you guys are so we have some rapid fire questions for you and we want you guys to tell us the first thing that comes to oh your mind God. and it's it's only for them it's, it's super short and um <laughs> let's, let's get going let's see if you <laughs> <laughs> let's see if let's see if you guys in sync right so um rapid okay. fire okay here we go okay favorite all right so you guys we're ready for you so when you guys are together it's that one movie that you guys need that you guys want to watch that you guys never pass up it's your go-to movie what is it Rapid fire. Well, the thing about <laughs> movies is she falls asleep. So I wish I could say there was a favorite, but if there was anything past the first five minutes, I don't wow, really? remember. I would say it's more so TV shows. Like we watch more TV shows right. together. So okay, TV show. Where we're like binge watching The Wire right now. Okay. Yes. The Wire or Game of Thrones? From and back Game in the day, The Wire. We're so like back. Yes. 
I love it. Yes, we, we, I, I missed that whole season. But, and Game of Thrones is like, I'm going to watch the whole thing again. I was so disappointed with the last season, by the way. Yeah, it was. Horrible. But the Red so Wedding, I love Red Wedding is epic. Red Wedding is epic. Right? That, that oh, is was a foreign crazy. language to me. Foreign language. That yeah. was a, I literally cried. I cried. It was so sad. I it hated was, that scene. His thing about being busy, so good. Right? When you get a break, you have so much content to catch up on. So much content. Like, you can watch yeah. movies for years. If you spend years working, it's like, I didn't know about Game of Thrones. I didn't I know about the wire. Wire. So we're having a good old time during quarantine, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, catch up just, on the stuff that we missed. Exactly. Anyway, next question. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no, you're good. Our next question. When you guys are, you know, going to that deal together, you guys are in the car, and it's just that favorite artist that gets you guys in that chill mood. What artists are we listening to in the car? Her. Okay. I was going to say oh. Janine. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye. I like it. Yeah, I like Bye. that. Bye. 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 We're together. All right, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. Okay. And then bucket list. What is on you guys' bucket list to do? When quarantine's over, what, what, what's on a bucket list? What are y'all doing? The thing is, we do stuff. So, like... Um, I'm not adventurous. I love to travel. This is the thing. I love to travel. The reason we pause in that question and I'm laughing is because it's like he keeps trying to. I'm terrified of heights and snakes. Those are my like, no, 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 no. And so, as you know, a lot of couple activities deal with heights. And so, he always sending me these videos of like zip line. Like, oh my God, I don't even want to talk about zip line. And he, they, yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> zip lining's amazing. No, it's not. It's, no, it it's not. We went in Costa Rica, and we were about yes. 300 feet in the air. If not more than that, Costa she did Rica. Fine. Exactly. exactly. She's like, they, I was not amused. Oh, I, I was. Yeah, they lied to me. Okay, quick story. Went to Costa Rica for my birthday. I do an annual birthday trip every year, so I'm adventurous for my guests, right? I feel like I have to do something. Um, so I agreed to go. It was my birthday, so everybody else was going zip lining, and I didn't want to go. So they all bullied me into trying it out. The instructor said that I would only have to go, you know, up one time and then there's a trail you can walk back down. We get to this stop. I do my one little zip line. There is no trail to go back down. I have to go to all seven yeah. of those different routes. And it was horrible, horrible, horrible. I wouldn't even go myself. So the instructor had to go with me the whole time. And all I did was close my eyes and scream and cry. And so I don't no. I don't have really a bucket list. It's places I want to go, but it's not any adventures I feel like I need to necessarily experience. I'm not jumping out of an airplane. It's a bucket I'm list. Not, that was fun. <laughs> How do y'all want to go skydiving with him? Y'all can go. Come on. I'll be down down there taking pictures and video. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm with you, Denise. No, I don't I, need to I've done it. <laughs> I did it for one of my birthdays and it was, it was great. So, um, my, I didn't, I didn't do any tricks in the sky. Yeah. I got lied to though. They said I was going, um, you know, they tell you you're going to go on the count of three and I thought I was going last and I actually went out first and then they jump, you know, it's someone with you, but oh. you know, it's not a jump out the plane. It's more of a fall out the plane. So we fell oh, out oh. at one, the count was supposed to be till three and we fell out at two. So I was like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> And so, and then my husband came after me, but he was actually doing tricks with his guy and was spiraling down and stuff. And my guy was like, you want to do some, you want to, you want to flip? I was like, nah, I'm good. Just give me, oh, some, wow. give me that. He did the zip line upside down. He did the zip line upside down. I was going to, and every time I was like, nope, gave me anxiety. Even this last time, I've been zip lining several times. And this last time I was like, yeah, I'm going to go upside down. Or I'm gonna... Actually, I said I was going to do Superman. It was in Costa Rica. We went to Costa Rica for my oh. birthday in November. And, I, and there was like, do Superman. Nah, I'm not doing it. I was like, regular. I need regular. This is I, They put me up for Superman. <laughs> Not happening. Oh. I know they have another question or two. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I to- <laughs> no, that was it. Actually, we just we just had three rapid fire questions. There's three of us oh, in real women okay. real estate. We just did the, the three rapid fire questions. And so just wanted to say thank you both for giving us your time today. And it's evening for you guys. It's still it's still a full day out here on the West Coast, but evening for you guys. And just want to say thank you guys for joining us. How can everyone reach thank you guys, guys for having us? How can so, you, um, you can go to my website at 
denisethebroker.com. Right. denisethebroker.com or uh, my Instagram is at denisethebroker. Um, I can't add any more Facebook friends, so please follow me on Instagram so I can, you know, delete some Facebook friends. Um, and then on YouTube as well, uh, Denise the Broker on YouTube also. Right. And for me, it's simple. Go to austinbrusar.com. It's one of those French, Haitian, Louisiana names, right? B-R-O-U-S-S-A-R-D, austinbrusar.com. From there, you can find everything that you need. Social media, real estate courses, consultations, all that. I want a French Haitian African. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so it. adorable. I, love I, love it. It. I already got on my white thing. I'm ready. Oh my there you go. <laughs> Now that's a plug. That's a that plug for you right there. That's right, right. <laughs> y'all, I'll have it. to be invited because we support this message. Yeah, <laughs> 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 absolutely. Yeah, well, thank you guys again for being on the show. This was incredible. We learned guys. so much today, mm-hmm. and um, you know we appreciate it. All right, that's All a wrap, right, guys. guys. Thank you.